I believe everyone has a vocation. Everyone is called to something. It could be teaching, nursing, and of course, being a father or a mother, husband and wife. They're all, they're all callings in a sense, because I believe that God, who is love, is calling each of us. We're sitting now in the chapel in Carmelite Monastery in Dysart, the Sinkakadi in Fife. I've been in this Carmel, the monastery here for 16 years now, and I've done all kinds of different work. Our vocation, though, is actually to pray. So we pray together. We also have hours of prayer separately, um, and we pray for all the needs of the, the world. We pray for the church, all kinds of different problems in the world, people in difficulties. We believe that everything that we do in these four walls is somehow helping other people out in the world. And that's, that's our way of helping people by prayer. People see it as a waste of time, I know, but um, we feel it's a life of faith, actually, because you don't always see the answer to your prayers or even um, we don't always feel we're, we're doing anything but I firmly believe that prayer is always answered yeah, and not always the way we expect because God is a God of surprises, isn't he? It um, doesn't always <laughs> go by what we're human, he's, he's divine so he knows the answer to everything. Mm -hmm. My mother brought us up in a very Catholic way and we had a picture at home when I was a little girl, a picture called the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And that's a picture in which Jesus is showing his heart, it's visible. It's all lit up with flames coming from it. And it's a symbol of the love of Jesus for all of us. And this picture spoke to me very powerfully when I was a child. And I used to spend a long time in front of it. So I was very conscious that I was loved by Jesus. And I really wanted to return that love. I felt a great urge to do so. But as I grew up, I got to my early teens. I began to find the world a very attractive place. And I got all these crazes, Elvis and um, various film stars. And of course, I got crushes on every boy I met practically. But I still felt this great urge inside me, this need really to respond to the call. But I was going to enjoy myself in the meantime. When I was 15, I got a temporary job during the school holidays. And the girls in the office took me to the Cavern Club. I was in Liverpool then. I was living in Liverpool. And I saw the Beatles for the first time. And they hadn't even made records then. But I was, that was my latest craze then. <laughs> October 1965, I joined the Liverpool Monastery. And I was very happy there. It was challenging. And it was very challenging to leave behind the music scene and the dancing. I loved dancing and the boys, of course. <laughs> but I was, I was really happy. And I stayed there until 94, about 1994. And then I transferred here to Scotland. I was born in Denny in Stirlingshire. Um, people would say, oh, poor thing, you know, um, country girl. And um, I grew up there until I, I went to school in Denny and then in St Modens in Stirling. Uh, I left when I was 16 because I didn't like school and I got a job in an office in Stirling 
and I worked in the office until I entered and when I was 18. We're going in to see Sister Raphael. She entered the Carmelite convent in Nairobi, so she was in Kenya for 40 years and she's 91 now and she's being cared for in our infirmary and she still does a lot of um, cards. She's very artistic and here we are. Good morning, Sister. Oh, good morning. Here we are. I'm just finishing up for Christmas oh, good. What are you Christmas doing today? Shading the frame around. Oh, lovely. The calling to Carmel, that is special vocation for the contemplative life. Not that we are the whole day contemplating. We do some work and prayer. We combine it. But the main thing is to pray for the people with whom we live and for the world. And that is our main vocation, and I'm happy. It's a special call. Not everyone is called. Some are called to teach or to nurse. But we, be, we should be happy. We are planted in a place like a flower, and all we have to do is to bloom, and the sun will shine on us. Yes. So now I'm in beautiful Scotland Good. with a beautiful country and beautiful people. Um, there's a lovely spirit among the sisters, you know, and um, but we have a great laugh. We can laugh together at recreation with funny things, you know, and what happens. And um, they're always very concerned about your family and we can share things like that, you know. We're very much a family, we really are. We're all different, and perhaps that, I think that's a good thing. We're all very different characters, personalities, ages, backgrounds. When a sister dies, um, she's a real miss in the in the community. You know, we miss it, and we're we're happy to look after each other when we're sick. Or um, we really we we appreciate that we're very blessed in that way. That there's so many people outside that don't have people to look after them. Whereas we know that we'll always be cared and cherished because we're in a community. And um, I think cherish is a lovely word and I think that's what, that's, um, that's what we are. We're cherished by the other sisters and that's very important. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. been a Carmelite for 48 years and I'm very, very happy. There have been difficult times, challenging times, but there's never been a time when I wasn't happy in what I did or when I regretted my choice. I sometimes think I'm the happiest person in the world, but probably everyone else here would claim to be just as happy. <laughs> I did watch Sister Act when I was in the Liverpool Monastery and I enjoyed it very much. Our parish priest brought it to us and played it for us. And what I liked was that the sisters were portrayed in a very nice light, both as human beings and as good people. So I've never seen those things happen in a monastery. <laughs> but the people who were portrayed as human beings who loved God and loved one another. Yes, I think that was very good. I've never met a Hoopie Goldberg, but I would be quite happy to have one. 